Hello and welcome to this exploring session, the third session this week of looking at the conflict of conscience. Uh, and uh, we are looking at Act 4, Scene 4, to the end of the play, or the ends of the play, uh, perhaps is a better way of putting it. Um, this is, uh, I say, our third session. Uh, we have done two videos on the, the play so far. Uh, it's gone through various different forms and and elements. There's elements that have been quite sermony. There's been elements that have been feeding into quite conventional uh, Tudor interlude, Tudor morality plays from earlier in, in time. Um, and also into this sort of interesting uh, Inquisition courtroom drama that we've, we've entered into in the last session. So we're going to finish the text off now and uh, conclude the journey of Philologus or Philologus. And uh, and we will uh, uh, find out uh, what happens to him. Uh, Philologus <laughs> has so far um, uh, renounced his uh, Protestantism. He's been drawn towards uh, the Catholic faith. This play is defiantly anti-Catholic. And I should just point out, as per usual, that uh, we do not affirm uh, any of the uh, opinions uh, professed by this playwright. Uh, we are simply examining the text to find out how it functions and uh, make decisions about what we might do with it in the future, if anything. Uh, reading the play today, reading uh, the, shall we say, uh, inquisited uh, figure of Philologus is... I am Greg, and I'm not a professional actor, and I'm based partly in stratford and partly in Berkshire. And uh, reading today, uh, G Gisbertus and uh, Nuntius today is... Hi, I'm Eric, and after yesterday, I'm really tempted to give them Scottish accents just for fun. <laughs> <laughs> dealer's choice, dealer's choice. Uh, reading a sensual suggestion, and uh, Pathinitus is... Liza Graham. Uh, very confused. <laughs> uh, reading conscience, and uh, not be confused with philologus, but this is a theologus, I'm going to say it that way, with a th, uh, today is... Hi, I'm Rachel, an actor from New Jersey. And uh, continuing his stint as hypocrisy uh, is... Uh, Steve Longstaff from North Lancashire. And uh, joining us to read spirit, horror... And Eusebius is... Hello, Lindsay Beach. I'm currently um, locking down in Norfolk. And I'm your host, Robert Crichton. I'm not reading anything today apart from any stage directions that may or may not appear. I don't know that there were that many originally. Uh, certainly we have some issues with the uh, act and scene numbers. So we've just done Act 4, Scene 1, and we're now about to start Act 4, Scene 4. Uh, we can assume that maybe someone accidentally forgot to actually uh, divide uh, the uh, previous unit uh, uh, scene into un uh, additional units of action um, in the convention that this play is generally using, which is to do with primary uh, entrances and exits. So Act 4, Scene 4 isn't really, I think, um, uh, actually an exit uh, into a new scene. It did say exuant at the end of uh, the previous scene, but I think Philologus actually is possibly still on stage or drawn immediately back on stage. There isn't a meaningful gap in the action here. Uh, so Philologus has just been beaten down by the vices, uh, by logic, by torture, by, uh, by uh, magic mirrors into renouncing his uh, Protestantism and, uh, and accepting the Catholic faith. And uh, at this moment, the, the voice of a spirit speaks to him. Philologus, 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 I say, in time take heed. Go not too far, look well thy steps unto. Let not suggestion of thy flesh, thy conscience, thee betray. Who doth conduct thee in the path that leadeth to all woe? Weigh well this warning given from God before thou further go, and sell not everlasting joy for pleasures temporal, from which thou soon shalt go, or they from thee bereaved shall. Alas, what voice is this I hear, so dolefully to sound into mine ears, and warneth me in time yet to beware? Why? 
have I not the pleasant path of worldly pleasures found to walk where it, therein for my delight? No man shall me debar. Look in this glass, Philologus, for naught else do thou care. What dost thou see within the same? Is not the coast all clear? Naught else but pleasure, pomp, and wealth herein to me appear. Give me thy hand. I will be guide and lead thee in the way. What dost thou shrink, Philologus, where I dare go before? They shrink so still, Philologus, in time turn back, I say. In sensual suggestion, see that thou tread no more. And though the frailty of the flesh hath made thee fall full store, and to deny with outward lips thy God and Lord most dear, the same to establish with consent of conscience, stand in fear. Thou art yet free, Philologus. All torments thou mayst scape, only the pleasures of the world thou shalt a while forbear. Renounce thy crime and sue for grace, and do not captivate thy conscience under mortal sin. The yoke of Christ do bear. Shut up these words within thy breast, which sound so in thine ear. The outward man hath caused thee this enterprise to take. Beware lest wickedness of spirit the same do perfect make. My heart do tremble for distress. My conscience pricks me sore and bids me cease that course in time which I would gladly run. The wrath of God, it doth me tell, doth stand my face before, wherefore I hold it best to cease that race I have begun. These are but fancies, certainly, for this way thou shalt shun all worldly woes. Look in thy glass, and tell me what it show. Thou wilt not credit other men before thyself, I trow. O oh, gladsome glass, O oh, mirror bright, O oh, clear, crystal clear as sun, the joys cannot be uttered which herein I behold, wherefore I will not thee forsake what evil soever come. Needs thou wilt thyself undo, say not, but thou art told. Hap, what hap will? I will not lose these pleasures manifold. Wherefore conduct me once again. Here, take me by the hand. That sensual suggestion doth lead him. Understand. And we'll pause there. That's the end of the scene as listed, but the action is going to continue. This is really interesting, you know. Uh, it's, we were talking about magic tricks yesterday, and it's very much and and stay under. Um, you know, and, and uh, look, look at the look, look at the tricks, look at the tricks. Here's the, you know, the, the 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 swiftness of the hand confuses the eye. Um, uh, you know, come with me, no, come with me, come with me, no, come with me. Um, it, it's um, yeah, it's really interesting. Uh, it's uh, and yeah, it's 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 quite folly. Follow me, follow, follow the beautiful crystal ball. Uh, thoughts in the room. <laughs> Eric. I just realized that sensual suggestion is probably a weird name for this kind of thing because, I mean, I guess that the vices always have to have something to do with sensual stuff, but then Catholicism and sensual suggestion don't seem to go well together. Uh, I mean, like, in terms of, like, sensuality and religion in my head is kind of, I don't know, very forbid, very contradictory. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, it, it might be that you shouldn't really be thinking about this as um, uh, as uh, sexual sensual. Uh, you know, these are this is the the senses uh, element, and also that uh, Catholicism, the the rituals and the 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 elements there are slightly more sexual than the the very austere uh, side that Protestantism might 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 throw at you. So there is that sense we want to make perhaps sensual suggestions slightly more sexual than, than the text actually wants. Well, well, I think it's to do... Sorry, Rob, finish your thought. I no, 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 it. that was my thought. Um, I think it's to do with the word sensual, which we today interpret in a sexual way, but which then may have been more to do with the senses, like all five senses. So it might uh, include... Things like good food or a comfy chair. Uh, it certainly doesn't seem terribly sexy in this author's uh, this author's uh, conception, but 
uh, that may be more to do with th their particular hang-ups than uh, than much else. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't seem doesn't seem desperately desperately. We've had much sexier sexy times with uh, sex, sexy uh, characters. So, I mean, this is no concupiscence um, uh, or anything like that. Yeah, I remember Hippocrates' first speech where he talks about uh, subduing your carnal lust, but we have been offered pretty much zero carnal lust this whole play. Uh, Philologus talks about having a wife, uh, but the first we learn of her is that she's sad that the Inquisition has taken all their stuff. Well, as the, the author stated at the beginning, uh, some honest mirth, uh, yet always where decorum to exceed. So, uh, you know, I think maybe that was considered a bit too... Uh, uh, a bit too PG uh, in uh, what's aiming for a universal certificate. Um, other thoughts? That back and forth. Come with me. No, come with me. Stay yeah. on the path. Good angel, bad angel, you know, sort of. Not uncommon, I guess. Hmm. Uh, other thoughts before we move on? Uh, scene continues, Act 4, Scene 5, and uh, essentially the scene, the scene hasn't ended. Um, sensual suggestion has, uh, has got the ball, as it were. Uh, it looks like the spirit has exited, and we have the appearance of Conscience at last. Title character comes on stage. We're meeting Conscience. Uh, so let's see what conscience adds to Philologus and uh, and suggestions. Little tete-a-tete. -tete. Alas, alas, though thou woeful wight, what fury doth thee move? So willingly to cast thyself into consuming fire? What Circe hath bewitched thee thy worldly wealth to love? More than the blessed state of soul, this one thing I desire? Weigh well the cause with sincere heart, thy conscience thee require, and sell not everlasting joys for pleasures temporal. Resist suggestion of the flesh, who seeks thee for to spoil, from which thou soon shalt go, or they from thee bereaved shall, and take from thee, which God elect, true everlasting soul. See where confusion doth attend to catch thee in his snare, whose hands, if that thou goest on still, thou shalt no way eschew. What white art thou, which for my health dost take such earnest care? Thy crazed conscience, which foresee the plagues and tor torments do, which from just judge, whom thou deniest, shall by and by ensue. Thou hast good trial of the faith which I to thee do bear. Commit thy safety to my charge, there is no danger near. Such is the blindness of the flesh, that it may not descry, or see the perils which the soul is ready to incur, and much the less our own estates we can ourselves espy, because suggestion in our hearts such fancies often stir whereby to worldly vanities we cleave as fast as burr, esteeming them with heavenly joys and goodness comparable, yet be they mostly very pricks to sin abominable. For, for proof we need no further go than to this present man, who by the blessing of the Lord of riches having store, when with his heart to fancy them this worldly once began, and had this glass of vanities espied his eyes before, he God forsook, whereas he ought have loved him the more, and chooseth rather with his goods to be thrown down to hell, than by refusing of the same with God in heaven to dwell. Nay, hark, Philologus, how thy conscience can teach, and would detain thee with glozings untrue. But hearest thou, conscience, thou mayest long enough preach, ere words from whence reason or truth none ensue shall make Philologus to bid me adieu. What, shall there no rich man dwell in God's kingdom? Where then is Abraham, Job, and David become? 
I speak not largely of all them which have this worldly wealth. For why I know that riches are the creatures of the Lord, which of themselves are good each one, as Solomon us telleth, and are appointed to do good withal by God's own word. But when they let us from the Lord, then ought they be abhorred, which caused Christ himself to say, that with much lesser pain should camel pass through needle's eye, than rich men heaven obtain. Hereby, rich men, Christ did not mean each one which wealth enjoy, but those, but those which fastened have their love upon this worldly dust. Wherefore another cries and saith, O death, how great annoy! Dost thou procure unto that man which in his goods doth trust that thou dost this, Philologus, thou needs acknowledge must, whereby each one may easily see thou takest more delight in mundane joys than thou esteemest, in mundane joys than thou esteemest to be with angels bright. This touch of the quick, I feel the wound which if thou canst not cure, as maimed in limbs I must retire, I can no further go. This is the grief which conscience takes against thee, I am sure, because thou usest those delights which conscience may not do, and therefore he persuadeth thee to leave the same also, as did the fox, which, caught in snare and scaped with loss of tail, to cut off theirs, as burdenous did all the rest counsel. Indeed, I cannot use those fond and foolish vanities, in which the outward part of man doth take so great delight. No, neither would I, though to me were given that liberty, but rather would consume them all to naught, if that I might. For if I should delight therein, it were as good a sight as if a man of perfect age should ride upon a stick, or play with compters in the street, which pastime children like, but all my joys in heaven remains, whereas I long to be. And so wouldst thou, if that on Christ thy faith full fastened were, for that affection was in Paul the apostle, we may see. The first to the Philippians doth witness here in but bear. His words be these. O oh, would to God dissolve that I were, and were with Christ, another place is mine in those words tell. We are but strangers all from God, while in this world we dwell. Now, mark how far from his request dissenting in thy mind, he wished for death, but more than hell thou dost the same detest. The cause why Paul did loathe his life, life may easily be assigned, because the Jews in every place did seek him to molest. But those which in this world obtain security and rest do take delight to live therein. Nay, yea, nature doth endue each living creature with a fear, lest death should them accrue. Yea, the same Paul at Antioch dissembled to be dead, while they were gone who sought his life with stones for to destroy. Elias, for to save his life, to Horeb likewise fled, so did King David flee when Saul did seek him to annoy. Yea, Christ himself, whom in our deeds to follow we may joy, did secretly convey himself from Jews so full of hate, when they thought from the top of hill him to precipitate. Wherefore it is no sin at all for a man for to defend and keep himself from death so long as nature gives him leave. The same whom you recited have conceived a further end than to themselves to live alone, as each man may per perceive. For when that Paul had run his course, he did at last receive with heart's consent the final death which was him put unto. So when Christ had performed his work, he did death undergo. And would to God thou wouldst do that which these men were content for they despised worldly pomp, their flesh they did subdue, and brought it under, that to spirit it mostly did consent, whereby they, seeking God to please, did bid the world adieu. Wife, children and, children and possessions forsaking, for they knew that everlasting treasures were appointed them at last, the which they thirsting did from them all worldly pleasures cast, but thou, O wretch, dost life prolong, 
not that thou wouldst God's name, as duty binds us all to do, most chiefly glorify, but rather by thy living still wilt God's renown defame, and more and more dishonor him. This is thy drift I spy. I mean to live in worldly joys, I can it, excuse me, <laughs> I can it not deny. What are those joys which thou dost mean? But pleasure strange from God, by using of the which thou shalt provoke his heavy rod. Tush, knowest thou what, Philologus, be wise thyself unto, and listen not to those fond words which conscience to thee tell. For thy defence, I will allege one worthy lesson mo unto, unto the which I am right sure he cannot answer well. When David, by vain trust in men of war from God sore fell, and was appointed of three plagues the easiest for to choose, he said, God's mercy easier is to get than man's, as I suppose. Again, he saith among the Psalms, it better is to trust in God than that our confidence we settle should in man. Wherefore, to this which I now say, of force consent thou must, that when two evils before us placed no way avoid we can, into the hand of God to fall by choice is lawful then, because that God is merciful when man no mercy show. Thus have I pleaded in this cause sufficiently, I trow. How can you say you trust in God when as you him forsake? And of the wicked mammon here do make your feigned friend. No, no. These words which you recite against you mostly make. For thus he thinks in his distress. God cannot me defend. And therefore by suggestion frail to man's help he hath leaned. Mark who say truth of him or me. And do him best believe. I like thy words, but to lose these joys it would me grieve. And where suggestion telleth thee that God in mercies flow? Yet is he just sins to correct, and truth in that he speak? Wherefore he saith, Whoso my name before men shall not know, I shall not know him, when as judge I shall sit in my seat. This if you call to mind, it will your proud presumption break. Again he saith, Whoso his life or goods will seek to save, shall lose them all, but who for Christ will lose them, gain shall have. What? Did not Peter Christ deny, yet mercy did obtain? Where, if he had not of the Jews, he should have tasted death. Even so shall I in tract of time with bitter tears complain. Yea, time enough, though thou deferrest until thy latest breath. So saith suggestion unto thee. But conscience it denieth. And in the end, whatso I say for truth, thou shalt espy. That, and that most false which conscience shall in secret heart deny. Ah, oh, wretched man, what shall I do? Which do plainly seem my flesh and spirit to contend, and that in no small thing, but as concerning the event of extreme misery which I the study to avoid or else upon me bring, and which of them I should best trust, it is a doubtful thing. My conscience speaketh truth, me think, but yet because I fear by his advice to suffer death, I do his words forbear. And therefore pacify thyself and do not so torment thyself in vain. I must seek some means for to eschew these griping griefs, which unto me I see now imminent. And therefore will no longer stay, but bid thee now adieu. Oh, stay, I say, Philologus, or else thou wilt it rue. It is lost labour that thou dost. I will be at a point, and to enjoy these worldly joys, I jeopard will a joint. And exit Philologus and suggestion. Oh, cursed creature, oh, frail flesh. O oh, meat for worms, O oh, dust, O oh, blather puffed full of wind, O oh, vainer than these all. What cause hast thou in thine own wit to have so great a trust, 
which of thyself canst not espy the evils which on thee fall. The blindness of the outward man, philologus, show, shall, at his return, unless I can at last make him relent, for why the Lord him to correct in furious wrath is bent. And exit conscience. Lots of things going on there. Uh, we've got uh, late on scent. Uh, we had a little bit of it last time, but uh, just a, a little bit of anti-Semitism just to, to mix into the the, 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 the cheerful froth there. Um, yeah, it's it's interesting. I, I'm liking philo uh, Philologus' uh, sort of thing of going, well, I like some of the stuff you're saying, but then I like my stuff. <laughs> I really like the stuff and the things and the enjoying stuff and, 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 and you know, maybe actually I'm feeling a bit bad. So I'm just going to not listen to you. That 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 will solve the problem and I'll run away. Um, is that fair? Like, yeah, this is, um, you know, this is a point of relevance to today. In fact, you know, if we look at, for example, climate change, pretty much everyone agrees that something needs to be done. But when it starts impacting people's personal convenience, then you run into difficulties. Uh, say, you know, the same with almost any world world uh, problem, um, up to and including uh, the pandemic we are uh, currently in. And I hope referring to current events will not date the podcast too much. But uh, yeah, you see the you you do see not a war between two principles because Philologus um, acknowledges that conscience is is morally in the right. Uh, but suggestion says, you know, okay, yeah, sure, do what do what conscience says, but not yet. You know, have fun for a while first. It's it's not that urgent. So we we see the war between not between two principles, but between principle and uh, and personal uh, enjoyment. Mm. Yes, yeah, so I thought it was very interesting the way um, suggestion used the um, idea of confession even at the moment of death if you confess as a Catholic, you can still go to heaven. So you can just live the life that you want. And then in the, you know, last nanosecond of your life, if you confess, you'll still go to heaven. Um, as, as in a way of saying just, you know, you can enjoy all these things and still have heaven um, against what uh, conscience, conscience and spirit were both saying. Hmm. Um... And it, it does remind me, I can't remember what the play is off the top of my head, but there is a play where the, there is a person who keeps deferring um, uh, 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 that kind of act of, uh, you know, uh, and and keeps getting to the point where where he can uh, re recant and, uh, and be saved. And he dies literally the word before mm -hmm. and is damned. Um, and so there's a similar thing there. There is also the, there's something a bit disturbing about some of what conscience is saying of just going, hey, die, <laughs> become a mar. You know, if you if you tell these people that you're you're a Protestant, they'll kill you. But hey, that's that's a good thing actually because you'll be saved. And so that there is a slightly really quite death obsessed quality to conscience in this in this sequence. You know, uh, all these other people wished for death. What about yeah yeah um, uh, stuff, uh, Eric? Yeah, I was gonna say that it's kind of like the play we did this afternoon, where people are like, "I'm I'm not gonna sort of uh, hang around for you to, to to sort of be enslaved. I'm just gonna kill myself." And it was very sort of pro death in that sense. Um, there are yeah. there is a lot of death in that play though. Um, yeah. Yeah. This afternoon we were looking at a, a, a very different uh, question about uh, suicide in uh, in in Rome, uh, whereas this is this is about wishing for martyrdom. So it's yeah. a, uh, so there's sort of the interesting parallels. Um, uh, Rachel, um, catching a mid swig. I, I, yeah. I like to you know keep keep people on their toes. Um, I was just gonna say that. Uh, a lot of times when these a lot of like um you know sensual suggestion brings up you know all these anti-semitic things really and the I, I i'm just bringing up because this is like a it's it's different than even like within this own play like the scottish 
the Scottish guy or like in the other play that we were reading earlier today with like the French guy and things like that. Those are more played for comedy and here like it's like this suggestion here. This isn't played for comedy. It's show it's like very serious like and um, I just find that difference interesting that there's like it's not being played for comedy in this instance but it actually is like this you know like suggestion will suggest I guess racists anti-semitic things to people and that's the evil of it even though I don't think this is I mean it's a play from like you know 400 years ago it's not like going to be progressive or like to our um current like moral whatever and I don't want to judge it that way even though I don't like you know believe in some a lot of the things that it's saying but you know what I mean I just find it interesting that there's that difference because usually there is that that play towards uh comedy that's very you know discriminatory or low brow but yeah just yeah, different uh, one Liza I think wants to uh, step in on that point oh no uh well only if Rachel is uh it, it, are you done okay good um I mean, not good, but uh, anyway, um, but uh, you are absolutely right to flag up the anti-Semitic references in specifically in suggestion speech. And like that, you're right. The, uh, the Scottish character had one before um, specifically blaming the Jews for the death of Christ. Um, and like, again, this this is yeah completely terrible and also a, a common trope in in plays like this um it's especially prevalent in mystery plays as well where you know you have all these jewish characters complaining about what the jews are doing and 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 the the, the sort of interesting theological dancing that that goes on there it there's yeah. a lot of problematic material out there that uh, we need to pass it's it's true um uh, but I think, but but it is interesting that it's in that scene anyway that it's suggestion that keeps making those references, and that suggestion is uh, you know the audience is of course meant to see suggestion as the as the immoral character, uh, but whose arguments persuade. So not sure what to make of that, but you're absolutely right to flag it up. Mm. Uh, Stephen, were you uh, wanting to uh, uh, jump in? Um, well, this may not make sense, so I'll just shut up. But I was just wondering about the, uh, the the last things, as it were, versus the things of the world. You know, this kind of think upon thy death, and and how how much of a kind of slate of hand is involved in basically taking the older morality thing about you know, as it were, the spirit versus the world, and just saying, well, obviously the world is the Catholics. The world is the Catholic Church because that's the worldly, and um, what we've got here is uh, that that thing. But it's it's on to the Reformation, and yeah, this is a, a this is an established Protestant Church, so it's it's a peculiar it's a peculiar kind of move going on here, I think, and I, I wonder how much, you know, notwithstanding the magnificence of the Pope, and so on and so forth, I wonder how persuasive as a move polemically that was especially if we're talking about you know post dissolution of the monasteries and so on it's a long time since there's been any catholics like that in the, in britain you know quarter of a century at least so well, it's not a question is it i'm just uh, it's just trying to tap this it, it doesn't feel like john bale you know so is this something new or is this just a kind of lazy boilerplate yeah, with yeah, because you were talking about this the other day, and that that sense of this this is a conspiracy theorist who's who's just constantly dealing on it's them they're coming over here, and even if there's no evidence, and in fact the the lack of evidence might be the the thing that actually convinces him that, that yeah, because because they're all hypocrites, yeah. So of course there's no evidence, yeah. Um, I I I think there might be something in that 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 I I have additional data that I will throw towards the end. Uh, that may uh, give us an additional line on that. Eric? I was just going to say that it's also interesting because I think this is, uh, while there are you know issues with the content and stuff, it's very similar to the play we were doing last week. I think it was John the Evangelist or something, where um, 
it was Helen who mentioned that it's do penance, not repent, because there's a difference in the meaning of the, of the you know, sort of, I know it's just sort of like having the, them debating kind of, but they're not really debating. They're basically throwing shade at each other, but also debating. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of weird um, to think about it that way. Yeah, it's it's because the thing is, as, as Lysa said earlier, you know, suggestion isn't that interested in convincing him to uh, actually believe these things. He just wants him to defer uh, and conform outwardly uh, to to his viewpoint, uh, which actually isn't that different from the the, uh, the sort of settlement in uh, in Elizabeth's England and regarding uh, uh, Protestants. Um, you know, uh, you, you can think what you like, just as long as you say outside and do, conform out, outwardly to. Uh, to the way we do things um lots of uh, complications in that uh, statement but we will move forward um i think we uh, we are going to uh, uh reintroduce ourselves to hypocrisy who uh, actually is it, i've only just realized uh, this this is hypocrisy's swan song in the text i think uh so um uh, we've uh, hypocrisy was uh, very much the stand up figure of um uh, of the uh, the earlier play and we're now going into what is in the uh, original text labelled as Act 5, Scene 3. Um, I think it's fair to say that the, the numbering system went horribly wrong somewhere. Uh, so, um, yeah, so this is conscience has, uh, has uh, failed. Philologus has gone off uh, with all his stuff and suggestion. And now to break everything up, we have hypocrisy. Such chopping cheer as we have made, the like hath not been seen. And who so pleasant with my lord as is Philologus? His recantation he has made, and his dispatch had clean of all the griefs which unto him did seem so dangerous, which thing, you know, was brought to pass especially by us, so that hypocrisy hath done that which Satan did intend, that men for worldly well should cease the gospel to defend. What shall become of Philuscus, I mean Philologus, in actual manner to your eyes shall represented be. Though as now he seems to be in a state most glorious, he shall not long continue so. Each one of you shall see. Needs but I must be packing hence. My fellows stay for me. Shake hands before we do depart. You shall see me no more. And though hypocrisy go away, hypocrites here, it's good store. Just a couple of really nice things in there. I, I like, again, audience interaction, shaking hands, and then calling them all hypocrites. Um, that's a great closing gambit. I really quite like that, actually. Um, uh, uh, and and uh, any other fun bits in that, that speech that we particularly like um, for this swan song, as it were? I wondered about the phrase chopping cheer. Is, it, is this kind of like logic chopping, do you think? This is all uh, this sort of ironic, you know, all of this kind of uh, theological discussion, sort of chopping theology, as it were, is chopping cheer. But it's, it's anything but. Hmm. I, yeah, I quite like, yes, there's such logic chopping as we have made the like have not been seen. Um, if you read it that way, yeah. I like that. That's a really good question. I, I, I don't know, uh, but I like that. Uh, Eric? Uh, another good one is, uh, what shall become a foolish goose? I mean, philologus. And it's like, um, yeah, that kind of, I, I, that reads well because it's a pun, but I don't know how that would work in, in like, um, you yeah, know, in performance. Philologus. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we're getting a clue as how to say it. Philo uh, it's, it's, it's more a goose. Um <laughs> Um, yeah, I do like that as line. Um, but yeah, a goose named Phil. Phil yeah. the goose. Got Phil the goose. He's a foolish goose. Is Phil the goose? Um, okay. Uh, any other things on this? Essentially, a, a scene marker uh, while uh, Phil the goose to indicate some sense of time passing in his life. Maybe he comes on with a uh, grey hair uh, uh, and, and time has passed. Who knows? Uh, Act five, scene four. Uh, so it does at least sequentially follow the previous scene. Uh, Philologus enters with his children, uh, Gisbertus and Paphinitius. Uh, uh, anyway, enter Philologus. Come on, my children, dear to me, and let us talk a while of 
worldly goods which I have gotten out of my pleasant state, which fortune have installed me, who on me cheerly smile, so, to, so that onto the top of a wheel she doth me elevate. I have escaped all mishaps of which my conscience did prate. Oh, where before I ruled it was, is as is the common sort. Now as a judge within this land, I bear a ruler's port. Indeed, good father, we have cause to praise your gravity, who did both save yourself from woe and us from begging state, where if you had persevered still, as we did fear greatly, your good from us, your children, should to legate be confiscate. Our glorious pomps then should we have been glad for to abate. But now not only that you had for us, but also have such offices, whereby more gains you year by year shall save. I was at one I was at point once very near to have been quite forlorn, had not suggestion of the flesh from folly me reclaimed, and yet set this glass of worldly joys my sight and eyes before. The sight whereof did cause all things of me to be disdained. I thought I had felicity when all I had obtained. And to say truth, I do not care what my soul betide, so long as this prosperity and wealth by me abide. But let us go homeward again, some pastime there to make. My whole delight in sport and games of pleasure I repose. And enter horror. You're on your own, folks. Nay, stay thy journey here a while. I do thee prisoner take. I shall abate thy pleasures soon. Yea, too soon, thou wilt suppose. What is thy name? Whence comest thou? Wherefore, to me disclose? My name is called Confusion and Horror of the Mind. And to correct impenitence of God, I am assigned. And for because thou dost despise God's mercy and his grace, and wouldst no admonition take by them that did thee warn, neither when conscience counseled thee, thou wouldst his words embrace, who would have had thee unto God obedience true to learn, nor couldst between suggestions craft and conscience truth discern. Behold, therefore, thou shalt of me another lesson hear, which wilt thou nil thou with torment of conscience thou shalt bear. And where thou hast extinguished the Holy Spirit of God and made him weary with thy sins, which daily thou hast done, he will no longer in thy soul and spirit make abode, but with the graces which he gave to thee, now is he gone. So that to Godward by Christ's death rejoicing, thou hast none. The peace of conscience faded is, instead whereof I bring the spirit of Satan, blasphemy, confusion, and cursing. The glass likewise of vanities, which is thine only joy, I will transform into the glass of deadly desperation. By looking in the witch, thou shalt conceive a great annoy. Thus have I caught thee in thy pride and brought thee to damnation, so that thou art a pattern true of God's just indignation, whereby each man may warned be the like sins to eschew, lest the same torments they incur which in thee they shall view. Oh, painful pain of deep disdain, oh, griping grief of hell. O oh, horror huge, O oh, soul suppressed and slain with desperation, O oh, heap of sins, the sum whereof no man can number well, O oh, death, O oh, furious flames of hell, my just recompensation, O oh, wretched wight, O oh, creature cursed, O oh, child of condemnation, O oh, angry God and merciless, most fearful to behold, 
O oh Christ, thou art no lamb to me, but lion fierce and bold. Alas, dear father, what doth move and cause you to lament? Thy sins, alas, which in thy, this glass appear innumerable, for which I shall no pardon get. For God is fully bent in fury for to punish me with pains intolerable. Neither to call to him for grace or pardon am I able. My sin unto, is unto death. I feel Christ's death do, doth... Uh, my sin is unto death. I feel Christ's death doth me no good. Neither for my behoof did Christ shed his most precious blood. Alas, dear father, alas, I say, what, what sudden change is this? I am condemned into hell these torments to sustain. Oh, say not so, for my father, dear. God's mercy mighty is. The sentence of the righteous judge cannot be called again, who hath already judged me to everlasting pain. Oh, that my body buried were, that at its rest might be, whose soul were put in Judas's place or Cain's extremity. Oh, brother, haste you to the town and tell the Theologus what sudden plague and punishment my father hath befell. I run in haste and will request for him for to come with us. Oh, father, rest yourself in God and all things shall be well. Ah, oh, dreadful name, which when I hear to sigh at me compel. God is against me, I perceive. He is none of my God, unless in this that he will beat and plague me with his rod. And though his mercy doth surpass the sins of all the world, yet shall it not once profit me or pardon mine offence. I am refused utterly. I quite from God and world. My name within the book of life had never residence. Christ prayed not. Christ suffered not my sins to recompense, but only for the Lord's elect of which sort I am none. I feel his justice towards me. His mercy is all gone. And to be short, within short space, my final end shall be. Then shall my soul incur the pains of utter desolation. And I shall be a precedent most horrible to see to God's elect, or that they may see the price of abjuration. To hear my father's doleful plaints, it, it bringeth perturbation unto my soul. But yonder comes that good Theologus. Oh, welcome, sir, and welcome you, good Master Eusebius. And we'll just pause before we go into the final yeah. scene. Um, yes, um, I, I have to uh, th thanks to Eric's uh, performance. I was I I spent much of this uh, with the Muppets uh, uh, Christmas Carol in my uh. mind. Um, Me too. And, 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 <laughs> Especially when horror comes on and it's sort of just whoomph, over everything, um, and uh, it's just like, it's like with Philologus, it's it's always Christmas, children. Here, have some staff. Uh, oh, thank you, Father, for your bounty. Um, Little Tim. And then I I love the way that horror twists the mirror, so the mirror is no longer showing lovely things; it's showing terrible things. Look, look, look into the mirror. Um, so yeah, uh, there's there's a lot to to really uh, in, in, enjoy the, uh, with this. Um, uh, thoughts from the room. I mean, it doesn't say horror exits, but presumably horror's not standing there for the rest of the scene, or or <laughs> just slowly gnawing on one of his arms. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> No, I assume you exit at the end of uh, end of your speech, yeah. and he's left leaving Philologus to uh, to uh, woe is me for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, Eric, I know that it's uh, well. I mean, this is probably like what you, most morality plays do and stuff. But it's interesting how you get horror and suggestion and all these things that are very internal, and then you've got like the characters who are external, like you know Theologus, Gispertus, and stuff. But they don't have a different sort of register. I mean, okay, maybe like horror has rhyming and stuff, but, but so does so does philologus basically. It's it's kind of they don't have a different tone. Mm. Yes, the allegorical characters are are very much of the same world of the real world characters. Um but do we do we think that um Gisbertus and um Paphinitius, however you say it, can see horror? Like I'm, I was assuming they couldn't see horror. That I was like an internal apparition, 
project it out somehow. Mm, alas, dear father, alas, I say, what sudden change is this? It, it doesn't seem like, it looks like the change in him, they, they haven't seen that, so yeah. Um... Also, the, the and one interesting line is, uh, so that to Godward by Christ's death rejoicing thou hast none. And um, I, I find it interesting that the focus is on the death, not the resurrection. Uh, <laughs> just, a, um, you know, passing in detail, I guess. There's a lot of emphasis on death. Liza? Yeah, I mean, to the point before this one, I think the children don't see horror because they're innocent. Uh, only Philologus has committed the sins which let him see horror. But to Eric's point, I was thinking while this was reading, while we were, while this was being read, that is this not a bit heretical? I mean, it's it's very, 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 very Calvinist, but. Um, I was pretty sure that uh, that the general line was that Christ had died for our sins, that is, everyone in the world, and not only for the sins of those whom God had decided in advance were his elect, because the limited number of an elect which is predestined or decided in advance is very much a Calvinist thing. Um, and it's also very much, uh, you know, a, a, well, we, well, uh, it's a thing of people who want to believe themselves the elect and obviously everyone else not so. Um, so uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I just thought I would flag that up. Yeah, we, we've had hints that he might be a, a, a bit a bit more uh, intense than uh, than some other writers of his of his uh, uh, time. So uh, we, we, maybe maybe that that is a, a point. Maybe he's going a bit extreme. Lindsay. Yeah, I don't know my um, theology well enough, or indeed at all. Um, but horror does have a have a, um, a line that I was uh, as I was speaking it, it was surprising me, which is, you know, and where thou hast extinguished the Holy Spirit of God. So it's as if the, the you know the main sin is that it, he's he's killed the Holy Spirit in him, and therefore he is now. You know, Christ actually did not die for the sins, and that, that kind of thing. I don't know if anyone knows knows the theology better than me to, to, to add to that or, or by, by, by rejecting uh, true doctrine, he's making Jesus cry. Um, it's uh, making him very sad. I don't know if that's accurate. Um, that was just uh, my take on that. Um, Eric. Didn't we last week have a play that was about like basically sort of arguing um, how, you know, but I think it was the, one of the in-town ones where um, it's like, oh, Jesus and, uh, turns up and sort of talks about how, you know, the Holy Trinity is three separate entities uh, working as one. And then uh, I don't know if that transfers over to Protestantism um, in this context or, or not. And sort of maybe because it sounds like, you know, the Holy Spirit of God is very is like part of god rather than the holy spirit the father the son and the holy spirit the ghost and stuff we may be going down a tangent which we are not qualified to answer um, but they're good <laughs> questions to raise up and uh, viewers at home may have answers uh or opinions uh that uh, we we can uh, uh, we can uh, bounce off and uh, certainly it's a train of inquiry I, I think with a lot of these plays uh, uh from anything up to around about the 1570s uh, you know, getting getting some uh, some uh, experts on uh, on theology would, would is is starting to become a really important element that we need to uh, look to for the future. Um, any additional thoughts before we go into this this epic almost final scene, um, which I think we should probably just give it give its due and uh, let run unless something leaps out at us to uh, really chew over. Uh, okay, so Act 5, Scene 5, um, we've uh, already had announced by one of the children, uh, uh, Paf Paphinitius uh, went off to find uh, Theologus, who has now entered, and uh, so it's now a little uh, party with the children, uh, Theologus, um, and uh, and somebody else, uh, good uh, master, you, you Sibinus. Or Eusebius. Eusebius, yes. Uh, so yes, it's uh, it's quite a party, quite a party. We've got five <laughs> people on stage at the same time. This doesn't happen often. God save you, good philologus. How do you, by God's grace? 
you welcome up, but I, alas, vile wretch, I'm here, evil found. What is the chief of cause? Tell us of this your dolorous case. Oh, would my soul were sunk in hell, so body word and ground, that angry God now have his will, who sought me to confound. Oh, say not so, Philologus, for God is gracious, and to forgive the penitent his mercy is plenteous. Do you not know that all the earth with mercy doth abound, and though the sins of all the world upon one man were laid, if he one only spark of grace or mercy once had found, his wickedness could not him harm, wherefore be not dismayed. Christ's death alone for all your sins a perfect ransom paid. God doth not covet sinner's death, but rather that he may be living still bewail his sins, and so them put away. Consider Peter, who three times his master did deny, yea, with an oath, and that although Christ did him warning give, with whom before time he had lived so long familiarly, of whom so many benefits of love he did receive. Yet when once Peter his own fault did at last perceive, and did bewail his former crime with salt and bitter tears, Christ by and by did pardon him. The gospel witness bears. The thief likewise and murderer, which never had done good, but had in mischief spent his days, yea, during all his life, with latest breath when he, with latest breath when he his sins and wickedness withstood, and with iniquities of flesh his spirit was at strife. Thorough, thorough that one motion of his heart and power of true belief. He was received into grace, and all his sins defaced. Christ saying, soon in paradise with me thou shalt be placed. The hand of God is not abridged, but still he is of might. To pardon them that call to him unfeignedly for grace. Again, it is God's property to pardon sinners quite. Pray therefore with thy heart to God here in this open space. And from the very root of heart bewail to him thy case. And I assure thee, God will on thee mercy show. Through Jesus Christ, who is with him our advocate, you know, I have no faith. The words you speak, my heart doth not believe. I must confess that I, for sin, am justly thrown to hell. His monstrous incredulity, my very heart doth grieve. Ah, dear Philologus, I have known by face and visage well a sort of men which have been vexed with devils and spirits fell in far worse state than you are yet brought into desperation, yet in the end have been reclaimed by godly exhortation. Such are the mercies of the Lord. He will throw down to hell and yet call back again from thence, as holy David writes. What should then let you trust in God? I pray you to us tell, sith to forgive and do us good, it chiefly him delights. What, would not you that of your sins he should you clean a quite? How can he once deny to you one thing you do request, which hath already given to you his best beloved Christ? Lift up your heart in hope, therefore, a while be of good cheer, and make access unto his seat of grace by earnest prayer, and God will surely you relieve with grace. Stand not in fear. I do believe that out from God proceed these comforts fair. So do the devils, yet of their health they always do despair. They are not written unto me, for I would fain attain the mercy and love of God. But, the, but he doth me disdain. How would you have that man to live which has no mouth to eat? No more can I live in my soul which have no faith at all. And where you say that Peter did of Christ soon pardon get, who in the selfsame sin with me from God did greatly fall, why I cannot obtain the same to you I open shall. God had respect to him always and did him firmly love, but I, alas, am reprobate. God doth my soul reprove. 
Moreover, I will say with tongue what so you will, will require. My heart I feel with blasphemy and cursing is replete. Then pray with us, as Jesus us taught. We do you all desire. To pray with lips unto your God, you shall me soon entreat. My spirit to Satan is in thrall. I can it not thence get. God shall renew your spirit again. Pray only as you can. And to assist you in the same, we pray each Christian man. O oh God, which dwellest in the heavens and art our Father dear, thy holy name throughout the world be ever sanctified. The kingdom of thy word and spirit upon us rule might bear, thy will in earth as by the saints in heaven be ratified. Our daily bread we thee beseech, O Lord, for us to provide. Our sins remit, Lord, unto us as we each man forgive. Let not temptation us assail in all else, Sorry, in all evil, us relieve. Amen. The Lord be praised, who hath at length thy spirit mollified. These are not tokens unto us of your reprobation. You mourn with tears and sue for grace. Wherefore be certified that God in mercy giveth ear unto your supplication. Wherefore, despair not thou at all of thy soul's preservation, and say not with the desperate heart that God against thee is. He will no doubt, these pains once past, receive you into bliss. No, no, my friends, you only hear and see the outward part, which though you think they have done well, it booteth not at all. My lips have spoke the words indeed, but yet I but fear yet I... my... Feel my heart with cursing is replenished with rancor, spite, and gall. Neither do I, your Lord and God, in heart my father call, but rather seek his holy name for to blaspheme and curse. My state, therefore, doth not amend, but wax the worse and worse. I am secluded, cleave from grace. My heart is hardened quite. Wherefore you do your labor lose and spend your breath in vain. Oh, say not so, Philologus, but let your heart be piped upon the mercies of the Lord, and I will ascertain remission of your former sins you shall at last obtain. God hath, it said, who cannot lie, at whatsoever time a sinner shall from heart repent, I will remit his crime. You cannot say so much to me as heaven I do know that by the mercies of the Lord all sins are done away and unto them that have true faith abundantly it flow. But whence do this true gift proceed to us? I do you pray. It is the only gift of God from him it comes away. I would therefore he would vouchsafe one spark of faith to plant within my breast. Then of his grace I know I should not want. But it is as easily may be done as you may with one spoon at once take up the water clean which in the seas abide. Not one draught, then drink it up. This shall you do as soon as to my breast of true belief one sparkle shall be tied. Tush! You which are in prosperous state and my pains have not tried, do th think it but as an easy thing a sin to, sinner to repent. Him have his sins, and by true faith damnation to prevent. The helpful need not physic's art, and ye, which are all hail, can give good counsel to the sick, their sickness to eschew. But here, alas, confusion and hell doth me assail, and that all grace from me is reft. I find it to be true, my heart is steel, so that no faith can from that same ensue. I can conceive no hope or all of pardon or of grace, but out, alas, confusion is always before my face. And certainly, even at this time, I do most plainly see the devils to be about me round, which make great preparation and keep a stir here in this place, which is only for me. Neither do I conceive these things by vain imagination, but even as truly as mine eyes behold your shape and fashion. Wherefore desire death dispatch, my body bring to rest, 
though that my soul in furious flames of fire be suppressed. Your mind corrupted doth present to you this false illusion, but turn a while unto the spirit of truth in your distress, and it shall cast out from your eyes all horror and confusion, and of this your affliction it will you soon redress. We have good hope, Philologus, of your salvation, doubtless. What your hope is concerning me, I utterly contemn. My conscience, which for a thousand standards guilty me condemn. When did this horror first you take? What, think you, is the cause? Even shortly after I did make mine open abjuration, for that I did prefer my goods before God's holy laws. The thought in wrath he did me send this horrible vexation, and hath me wounded in the soul with grievous tribulation. I may be a president in whom all men may view these torments which to them that will forsake the Lord are due. Yet let me boldly ask one thing of you without offense. What was your former faith in Christ, which you before did hold? For it is said of holy Paul in these same words and sense, it cannot be that utterly in faith he should be cold, whoso he be, which perfectly true faith and heart once hold. Wherefore rehearse in short discourse the sum of your belief in those points chiefly, which for health of soul are thought most chief. I did believe in heart that Christ was that true sacrifice which did appease the Father's wrath, and that by him alone we were made just and sanctified. I did believe, likewise, that without him heaven to attain sufficient means were none. But to re-knowledge this again, alas, all grace was gone. I never loved him again with right and sincere heart, neither was thankful for the same as was each good man's part that rather took the faith of Christ for liberty to sin, and did abuse his graces great to further carnal lust. What wickedness I did commit, I cared not a pin, for that Christ discharged had my ransom I did trust, wherefore the Lord doth now correct the same with torments just. My sons, my sons, I speak to you, my counsel, ponder well, and practice that in deeds which I in words shall to you tell. I speak not this, that I would ought the gospel derogate, which is most true in every part, I must needs confess. But this I say, that a vain faith alone you should not prate, but also by your holy life you should your faith express. Believe me, sirs, for by good proof these things I do express. Peruse the writings of St. James and first of Peter too, which all good God's people holiness of life exhort on to, by sundry reasons, as for first, because we strangers are. Again, sin from the flesh proceed, but we are of the spirit. The third, because the flesh all way against the spirit do war, the fourth that we may stop the mouths of such as would backbite, the fifth that other by our lives to God reduce we might. Again they sing a pleasant song which sing in deed and word, but where evil life ensue good words there is a foul discord. But I, alas, most wretched and white, whereas I did presume that I had got a perfect faith, did holy life disdain. And through I, sorry, and though I did to other preach good life, I did consume my life in wickedness and sin, in sport and pleasures vain. No, neither did I once contend from then flesh to refrain. Behold, therefore, the judgments just of God doth me annoy, not for a moment of my life but for me to destroy. We do not altogether like of this your exhortation. Whereas you warn us not to trust so much unto our faith, but the good works we should prepare unto our preservation. There are two kinds of righteousness, as Paul to Romans saith. The one dependeth of good works, the other hangs of faith. The former, which the world allows, God counts it least of twain, as by good proof it shall to you in words be proved plain. 
for Socrates and Cato both did purchase great renown, and Aristides, surnamed Just, this righteousness fulfilled. Wherefore he was, as justice man, expelled his native town. Yet are their souls with infidels in hell forever spilled, because they sought not righteousness that way that God them willed. The other righteousness comes from faith, which God regards alone, and makes us seem immaculate before his heavenly throne. Wherefore, there is no cause you should send us to outward act as to the anchor or refuge of our preservation. The meaning of philolog philolog the, the meaning of philologus is not here so exact as do his words make it seem by your allegation. He doth not mean between good works and faith to make relation as though works were equivalent salvation to attain, as is true faith, but what he meant, I will set down more plain. He did exhort the young men here by him for to beware, lest, as he did, so they, abuse God's gospel pure, and without good advice usurp of faith the gift so rare, whereby they think, what so they do, themselves from torments free, and by this proud presumption God's anger should procure. And where and where they boast and vaunt themselves good faithful men to be, yet in their lives they do deny their faith in each degree. Wherefore he saith, as Peter said, see that you do make known your own election by your work. Again, St. James doth say, show me thy faith, and by my works my faith shall, show, shall thee be shown. Show me thy faith, and by my works my faith shall thee be shown. And whereupon his own offense he doth to them be wit, where, whereas he did vaingloriously upon a dead faith stay, which for the inward righteousness he always did suspect, and hereupon all godliness of life he did neglect. That was the meaning of my words, however I them speak. The truth, alas, vile wretch, my soul and conscience too true feel. What, do you not, Philologus, with us no comfort take? When all these things so godly to you I do reveal, especially sith that yourself and them are seen so well, some hope unto us of your health and safety yet is left, we do not think that all God's grace from you is wholly reft. Alas, what comfort can be tied unto a damned wretch? What so ere I hear, see, feel, taste, speak is turned all to woe. Ah, dear Philologus, think not that aught can God's grace outreach. Consider David, which did sin in lust and murder too. Yet was he pardoned of his sins, and so shalt thou also. King David also, oh, sorry, King David always was elect, but I am reprobate, and therefore I can find small ease by weighing his estate. He also prayed unto God, which I shall never do. His prayer was that God would not his spirit take away, but it is gone from me long since. I shall be given no more. But what became of Cain, of Cam, of Saul, I do you pray, of Judas and Berahu? These must my conscience slay. Of Julian, or a pap of Julian apostate, with most of that crew, the same torments must I abide, which these men did ensue. Alas, my friend, take in good part the chastisement of the Lord, who doth correct you in this world, that in the life to come he might save you, he might you save, for of the like the scripture bears record. That is not God's intent with me, though it be so with some, who after God's punishment have into favour come. 
But I, alas, in spirit and soul, these grievous torments bear. God have condemned my conscience to perpetual grief and fear. I would most gladly live to, so I would most gladly choose to live a thousand, thousand year. And all the torments and the grief that damned souls sustain, so that at length I might have ease, it would me greatly cheer. But I, alas, shall in this life in torment still remain, while God's just anger upon me shall be revealed plain, and I example made to all of God's just indignation. Oh, that my body were at rest and soul in condemnation. I pray you, answer me herein. Where you, by deep despair, say you are worse here in this life than if you were in hell, and for because to have death come, you always make your prayer, as though your soul and body both in torments great did dwell. If that a man should give to you a sword, I pray you tell, would you destroy yourself therewith, as do the desperate, which hang or kill or into floods themselves precipitate? Give me a sword that you shall know what is mine own intent. Not so, my friend. I only ask what herein were your will. I cannot, neither will I tell where to I would be bent. Well, these words do nothing edify, but rather fancies fill, which we would gladly, if we could, endeavour for to kill. Wherefore, I once again request, together let us pray, and so we will leave you to God and send you hence away. I cannot pray, my spirit is dead, no faith in me remain. Do as you can, no more than might we can ask at your hand. My prayer is turned to, sorry, my prayer turned is to sin, for God doth it disdain. It is the falsehood of the spirit which do your health withstand that teach you this. Wherefore, in time, reject his filthy band. Come, kneel by me, and let us pray the Lord of heaven unto. With as good as will as did the devil out of the death mine go. O oh God, which dwellest in the heavens, blah, 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 blah. Tush, sirs, you do your labours loose. See where Beelzebub doth come and doth invite me to a feast. <laughs> You therefore speak in vain. Yea, if you ask all more of me in answer, I will be dumb. I will not waste my tongue for naught. As soon as, as soon shall one small grain of mustard seed fill all the world as I true faith attain. We will no longer stay you now, but let you hence depart. Yet will we pray continually that God would you convert. Gispertus and Paphiniatus conduct him to his place, but see he have good company, let him not be alone. And the children say together, We shall so do. God us assist, God with, his us assist with his most holy, holy grace. grace. Come, Father, do you not think good that we from hence be gone? Oh, let go my hands at liberty. Assistance I crave none. Oh, that I had a sword a while, I should soon ease it be. Alas, Alas dear father, father, what do, do you? you? His will we may now see. And exuant Philologus and his children. Uh... Oh, glorious God, how wonderful those judgments are of thine. Thou dost behold the secret heart, not doth thy eyes beguile. Oh, what occasion is us given to fear thy might divine, and from our hearts to hate and loathe iniquity so vile, lest for the same thou in thy wrath, wrath dost grace from us exile. The outward man doth thee not please, nor yet the mind alone, but thou requirest both of us or else regardest none. Here may the worldlings have a glass, their states for to behold, and learn in time for to escape the judgments of the Lord. 
whilst they, by flattering of themselves of faith, both dead and cold, do sell their souls to wickedness of all good men abhorred, but godliness doth not depend in knowing of the word, but in fulfilling of the same, as in this man we see, who though he did to others preach, his life did not agree. Again, Philologus witnesseth which is the truth of Christ, for that consenting to the Pope he did the Lord abjure, whereby he teach the wavering faith on which side to persist, and those which have the truth of God, that still they might endure, the tyrants which, the tyrants which delight in blood he likewise doth assure, in whose affairs they spend their time, but let us homeward go. I am content that after meat we may resort him to. And off they go to dinner. Um, I thought I'd give that head. Um, it's a, a long old scene of two people saying, "Hey, it's not that bad. You can just, uh, you know, go back." And he just goes, "No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give in to one hope. I'm going to give in to despair." Um, and. Nothing really is going to... They can't talk him out of it. And so they do the only sensible thing, which is send a slightly suicidal man off uh, and tell his children to look after him. Um, and uh, and lo, they do. It's interesting at the end there that um, they turn... Here may the worldlings have a glass their states for to behold. It's, it feels very pointed to the audience. The worldlings, you worldlings out there, look, watch this. Watch this carefully. Uh, you too could give in to despair. Thoughts about that lengthy sequence? I think we might have killed off Greg. <laughs> uh, Liza first, though. He's still there. He's gone for a snack. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I, I was fascinated by one passage in particular. Uh, the, it's quite early in the scene uh, where Philologus says, um, I do most plainly see the devils to be about me round, which make great preparation. Um, and then he says, neither do I conceive these things by vain imagination, but even as truly as mine eyes behold your shape and fashion. Mm. So all through this play, we, the audience, have seen the manifestations of uh, Philo both Philologus's goodwill and his and his ill will. We've we have we know he's right. We can see and presume there may be some devils uh, poking at him with sticks in dumb show here, even as he speaks this this passage. But um, but we we've got one we spare know... actor if we're going with six actors. So uh, <laughs> yeah. we've got one. Spare. Well, we know he's right. These things have appeared to him in person, just like his. His friends, which presumably are real people, uh, real, um, they're still they're still characters being played by actors, and then one of them says, "Oh, your mind is corrupted, and that's why you saw these false illusions." But the audience saw it too, so. Um, but maybe the whole thing, all of it's in his mind. Just <laughs> the audience is seeing inside his mind. It's it's very six characters in search of a biblical author. <laughs> it, it, it's it's it, again. We're, I, I feel we're going back to the prisoner. Um, and 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 the thing is it, that that thing about the devils, it, he constantly comes back to that. Um, uh, uh, so he's he, it's all the way through the scene, right to the end. So this idea, maybe his children w walking him away, but also maybe one of them actually isn't the child like leading him away. Maybe it's a, a, a demon. Um, you know, we've still got a scene to go, so who here feels that he's going to survive? Hands up. Uh, who here thinks he's, he's, he's going to, he's going to uh, commit suicide? Um, all, 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 some people hedging their bets there. Some people... <laughs> well, it's because I've, I've read it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Spoiler. I've plenty of time to read ahead. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, uh, let's let's okay as 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 that's what everyone thinks. Uh, let's uh, have act, act six, scene the last. Nuncius, please uh, read us the end of the play. Oh, joyful news, which I report and bring into your ears. Philologus, that would have hanged himself with cord, is now converted unto God with many bitter tears. 
by godly counsel, he was one. All praise be to the Lord. Sorry, I just told you. Um, his errors, all he did renounce, his blasphemies he abhorred. And being converted, left his life, exhorting foe and friend that do profess the faith of Christ to be constant to the end. Full thirty weeks in woeful wise afflicted he had been, all which long time he took no food but forced against his will, even with a spoon to pour some broth his teeth between. And though they sought by force this wise to feed him still, he always strove with all his might the same on ground to spill, so that no sustenance he received, no sleep he could attain. And now the Lord in mercy great hath eased him of his pain. So, uh, just so, who here <laughs> said he was going to commit suicide? Uh, hands up. Okay, uh, so, so you're right. Yeah, he he was stopped from hanging himself, uh, but then he repented, and then he starved himself. Ah, well, this is the thing, is there's another version of this epilogue. Oh. So, uh, I unfortunately don't have it. I, I thought I'd be able to get a copy of it, but I can't. So all I can do is report how the play originally ended. So in 1581... Uh, this play was printed in very uh, two two editions, I think, in uh, very quick succession. So ending number one has not only this character uh, committing suicide um, in despair, um, so he he does hang himself with a cord um, at the end, but also it names who he is in real life, because uh, this play is uh, not just uh, a piece of uh, general. Uh, morality play propaganda. It is in fact based on reportage. Uh, I've been holding on to this for two days. Um, so it's uh, Francis Spira, an Italian lawyer who was uh, hounded by the Inquisition into uh, into despair and renouncing his uh, his uh, Protestant beliefs and holding out for six months before. Well, we don't quite know precisely. You know, it's, I think it's uh, just noted that he uh, he uh, just uh, dies of despair or of something. It's not 100% clear how he actually did away with himself in real life or if he did, whether he just uh, was sort of starved himself to death, as, as is suggested here. And that uh, was uh, in 1548. So uh, in the past, and it was uh, published uh, uh, in translation uh, uh, from a text by Matteo Garibaldi in 1550. So it's a known story. Wasn't known to you because I'm mean. Um, so in the original epilogue, it states he, he hangs himself and he dies. And then it's possibly that didn't work well at the tryouts. Or somebody nudged somebody when it came to the printing and said, maybe we should go for a more positive ending of you know he's mm -hmm. saved because if you give in to despair and hang yourself then uh, then uh, you're, you're damned uh, whereas if you just you know give in to a sort of martyr's position and you know you, you, you recant then that's a, a bit better bit, 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 teeny, teeny bit better uh, so um, yeah, so there are two. I say I'm slightly disappointed I wasn't able to get the. Uh, I think it's only a few words different, but it actually states that Philologus is actually him uh, uh, at the end um, and, and confirms that point. Uh, so, um, whereas I think in the prologue it just sort of says, well, it might vaguely be based on something, but when we're, we're going to call him Philologus um, uh, and stuff. So, which ending do you prefer? I prefer the one where he kills himself, and that's really bad. But I, I quite like playing somebody who doesn't go. Oh, I'm all right then. I'm saved. I'm done. I'm fine. I was sort of expecting to. I was going. There's got to be a speech where I basically say, "I'm fine. <laughs> I'm saved," and I, it was nice not to get it. Yeah, yeah, your exit line, oh, that I had a sword a while, I, I should soon eased be. I mean, it's it's not a positive exit. Mm. And it's not like Magnificence going back 50-odd year, uh, odd years when we have characters who give in to despair, but someone comes in and saves them and, and, and turns them around. This play, at least initially, didn't do that. Mm. Yes, uh, Eric. Sorry, uh, Lindsay, you were saying. Uh, yeah, Lindsay first. 
sorry. Um, I was only going to say, yeah, because Eusebius says, tell, tell me, what would you do? You know, if you had a sword right now, what would you do? And he doesn't answer the question. <laughs> uh, Eric? I was just going to say, it's interesting how the, the hanging is seen as, like, worse than <laughs> the starvation. And I'm like... It's taken him 30 weeks to die, which is not ideal. I mean, like, sort of talk about dragging it out. Um, <laughs> if, if I was going to, you know, well, yeah, I'm not going to suggest that. But um, I, I would probably choose the first one uh, rather than the second. Yes, I, sh I should point out that the, 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 the play also does present us with the possibility of not doing away with oneself in any of those circumstances and that uh, in this uh, the, these times, uh, positive thinking is available and should be sought after. Um, other thoughts about this, uh, this, this play in the light of this as, as propaganda and reportage, perhaps, I don't know, or just general thoughts anyway. Uh, Rachel. Uh, this is this is just general because so many of these plays I think they start out so different at the beginning and then they change at the end and how you're you're saying now that um, there was a different ending originally for this where he hung himself I I feel like for more than a couple of these plays maybe somebody goes in and, and, and a, maybe a publisher or something is like maybe you should put in a different happier ending for these these plays just because so often it seems like there's this disconnect between the whole other part of the play and then the ending this one seem i guess is kind of a little more in tune because even though he doesn't hang himself in it he still dies of starvation <laughs> But he converted back to the right side at the end. You know, it's joyful news that he's done that. Um, uh, 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 depending on your point of view, Eric. I was just going to say that it's interesting how in this play, I feel like we've got the sort of how the body affects the spirit. Whereas in other other plays, I don't think we've had that. We Usually it's like the body is like, you know, the cardinal lust stuff is usually like the motivation that causes the fall but then you know the, the spirit triumphs whereas here um i can't remember what line it was but it was something that eusebius said or i think it was theologus i can't remember um <laughs> so many long names um and it just kind of feels like uh there's this very moment where they're kind of going that it's um it's both a problem of the soul and the body it's not just the body get like, it's not the soul getting carried away by the body if that makes sense. Mm. There is a connection. Um, yes, so as we go into uh, final thoughts, into extra time, um, it's again returning to that question of uh, what, what we might do with this. I, I, I think I artic articulated at the end of the last video, my, my general idea is that um, uh, focusing on the, the latter half of the play when the action gets going, when we hit the Inquisition, um, as a show that, that also features some, some didacticism at the beginning to sort of put this play in context and with a, with a reasonable trim. Um, I, I think there's something really interesting at the end here with Philologus's despair um, and that progression of, uh, of despair and surrounded by devils. I, there, there is something, re there's some really nice potential to that. Uh, really glad, Liza, that you flagged that up. Um, in fact, I'm going to go to you, Liza, now for final thoughts. What might be done with, you know, either the play as a whole or just simply this as material. Uh, what what might be done with uh, the conflict of conscience? Well, if I were uh, if I were asked to direct this play, you know, again, if I were offered a job at a theater I really wanted and the condition was I had to had to direct this play, I myself might fall into the sin of despair. Um, <laughs> Uh, I, but uh, you know, there, there, as there you are the cut. you can cut. It's allowed. It's fine. can I cut everything? No, <laughs> no. Oh, come, come, come now, Liza. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> it, it, it wasn't. It wasn't bad. But as a text, I do not know that it is stage worthy. Um, like the person writing it. Um, can philosophize, can write verse just about. Um, oh, can... That's a bit harsh. 
just about. That's a meme. <gasps> Fine, an entire play in rhyme royal, even if the meter goes halt of one foot on occasion. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, there's the occasional moment that is theatrical. And it is interesting that, you know, you over overlaying this with our modern ideas about psychodrama, that at the, at the apex of his success, Philologus es essentially gets depression, but it comes from God. Uh, and and uh, so the depression is good, except killing yourself is bad, except starving yourself is okay, because it fits with the theme of you mortifying the flesh, you see, the flesh, which is the villain of the, of the piece. Uh, so that's interesting to me, but I'm not sure if it's interesting with my critic hat on or my theater hat. They're different hats. The theater one has more feathers. Um, so I don't know if that interest is enough to sustain or, or to ask innocent people to actually sit through watching this on stage. Um, I, uh, you know, I might have to pay them to come and see it. That might be the answer. Uh, sustain the arts. That's this, my thought. <laughs> they're, they're talking about the psychodrama side of things. It's it's interesting if we it looks at it as a, a, a text about you know philolog, uh, philologus's you know journey, um, uh, and you know it's ultimately his worldview and 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 uh, as an internal struggle. There's something really interesting there, and that actually you, maybe you can strip away some of the external stuff from around that, and also visually. I, I'm, I'm now starting to think of this as a film. Um, that you know, quite a visual thing with actually only a relatively small amount of dialogue. Um, uh, that there are some really nice hooks to play with there, uh, as well as my already uh, stated theatre uh, theater thing. Other mediums are of course available. Uh, Eric, you you um, you volunteer was, to be the next final thoughts. Uh, no, I was just going to say that since we're talking about despair, then like you know, putting despair on stage. Um, I know it's not like a sort of morality play or anything, but. The more the modern equivalent would probably be like 448 psychosis or something, which is like very, very like it's dark. You don't put if you put that on stage, what, what happens to your actor? What happens to your audience? Like sort of um yeah, I don't know. It just kind of feels very like obviously this is not quite as well written as that, <laughs> but it Discuss. could yeah. <laughs> It, it, like it ends quite similarly, I guess. Yeah, because in a sense, all those um, morality play tropes that we had in the first session are, are really quite irrelevant um, to what then follows. And so there's, there's, there is that thing of, of I'm not that interested in the first session material that we looked at, those first two acts. Uh, you know, we get a courtroom drama and then a psycho dis dissent after sentencing. Uh, it's Crown Court goes goes medieval. Um, Lindsay, Lindsay. Yes, I mean, I missed the Crown Court bit because this is the only session I've done on this place. So this, this section we've done tonight is my only um, experience of the play. But I, I find myself sort of surprisingly um, kind of liking the characterization. Um, I was not really expecting to say that really because there are allegorical characters and and I, I very much agree with your idea of this as more like a film where there are apparitions and is it in his head or is it outside of him and that kind of thing I think is quite interesting but um yeah I thought I actually really thought the characters were kind of interesting and the interplay was interesting I was not expecting that so yeah uh Rachel final thoughts um no, I, 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 um, I think like things like this, like, uh, so may like I don't know. This one for me like feels like if you put it into like modern costumes and you were talking about a modern issue like, uh, through this, that this could be something interesting for people to watch because it does. I don't know. There, that like when there's these moral questions like from all this long time ago there are things that don't um you know trans 
translate well, but it, costuming or just moving, you know, keeping the text as is and then just moving, giving or not moving it, but giving people context and costume as to like the, I don't know what, I don't know. I think it would just be an interesting way to represent this as a relevant work to people. Uh, Stephen, final thoughts? Uh, yeah, I think it, de it depends to some extent on how well acquainted you are with despair, I think. Um, so I, I found it absolutely gripping uh, for sort of, because I'm quite well acquainted with despair, I suppose. Um, uh, and I, I, I thought the sort of picture of a, of a broken person, I wasn't expecting to, to at all be pulled into this, you know, and it, Temperamentally, I just do my bit and kind of semi-tune out, and I couldn't do that with this. I, th I, I really, really did enjoy it. So it's, I think it's partly um, uh, that Lindsay's already mentioned. You know, I, I think that that sort of three-part thing where he, he just he just will not um, he will not take it on board, and I'm I was I was remark. It made me think about pollution. This idea that the Roman church is not just a kind of slightly different ideology that you can sort of tick the box for, but it's something that, you know, will actually really badly mess you up on on multiple levels if you mess with it. It's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like a combination of uh you know, conspiracy theory and heroin or something like that. You know, and uh, I've, I've spent quite a lot of time thinking about the 16th century, and um, this this really felt very immediate to me. So I think there's a picture of despair. I mean, the play doesn't hang together like that, but with, with the Inquisition, the brainwashing, blah, 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 and then that kind of recantation and the absolute inability to put yourself back together again so you can hope. Uh, I think I, 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 um, I was actually really, really gripped by it. It did remind me a little bit. I don't know if anyone's ever read uh, Rites of Passage by William Golding, um, uh, which involves a clergyman s starving himself to death, um, not because he's gone over to the sort of Catholic church, but because he's performed a sex act on a sailor while he was drunk. Um, it's, it, basically, they're all off to Australia, and you know, so it's a, it's a kind of voyage thing. Uh, and this parson is completely unable to accept who he is and what he has done, and he actually just starves himself to death as a result of that because it's, he he cannot look at, back over the line that he's crossed. Um, it's a great novel, and it uh, what it has in common with this, I think, is 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 the time to breathe it gives for this psychological state. Um, you know, the very careful probing, uh, you know, the very sort of helpful therapeutic stuff. And still, it's just completely, uh, it, 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 the despair is impervious. Um, so it's, it is a kind of, I can completely see that it's driven by sort of some kind of empathy with, with a broken man and remember as well the you know the the kind of mid-century Tudor hot gospelers they love martyrs you know the uh burnt at the stake for your faith cool 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 you know um the faith you know the protestantism is is built on all of those protestants and quasi-protestants who who died for the faith and it's it's really really striking you know, that this is what happens if you don't die for the faith. This is what it does to you. You know, there are worse things, you know. Mm. So uh, I really like I really liked it. I didn't expect it. But I really liked it. Yeah, um, I've, I've got another production in my mind now, um, but I'll, I'll go to Greg first. Uh, Greg, final thoughts. Yeah, I mean, only done one session on it. And and Greg's Greg's gone 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 very really slow motion. The, there. I, the, I, I there are some really great speeches for the one whose name. 
not don't worry nothing yeah. particularly much to say i'm gonna log off because i think i'm gonna lose myself Hello, log off <laughs> <laughs> The, inter the internet wasn't ready for your thoughts, Greg. No. Um, it, it was saying it was take, taking taking you taking you off. God has right. smote your internet connection for unrighteousness. <laughs> right, take everyone bye. 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 Um, okay, well uh, that that um, leaves uh, uh, that that thing. I I, was, I started having a, a, a very physical theatre dance uh, motif th uh, thought for this as well, actually. Uh, I mean, one of the big problems with presenting this for an audience is um, I think there's there's always actually it's not a big audience, but there is an audience out there who do like things that are about ideas that are willing to sit through. I mean, it's not a big audience. It's not going to be, you know, dominating any West End theatres any time soon. But there are people who like debating and ideas um, uh, and, and play on that that level. But we do you have to prep the audience that this is going to be playing with, you know, uh, ideas that, and a perspective that is uh, unpleasant. And that's why the, the, the dance angle was appealing to me and the, or the physical theatre angle of just, you can take this story of someone being broken down and that's quite compelling. And you can take that story and do something with that. Um, uh, and that's a way of also removing some of the stuff that's quite toxic out of it. Um, and, and I can really, I see, I've really been seeing this play in pictures, actually, the more I think about it. Uh, once, once you get past that opening section, um, it's, it's very picturey, and, and that this might just live inside this man's head. A lot of what's going on here, the appearance of Satan at the beginning, uh, you know, might be some sort of interesting delusion. Um, it would make a very arty film, uh, perhaps. Um, but um, I, I, I think that might work. Um, so yes, I, I have to say on Monday I was uh, I was really struggling with this play and really struggling to find a route in. And 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 and. But uh, by the end of it, there there are options. Um, uh, even with a play that on paper doesn't look desperately uh, compelling there there are elements in it that uh, that have possibilities anyone want to throw in any new final thoughts uh, in response uh, anyone want an another go at the thought they had earlier we've got a couple of minutes in lieu rachel yeah i i, I want to make it clear i i do like the this play i do think like i, I don't want to like have my final thought being like coming off to sounding negative uh, I'm just not good at like explaining what I meant, but like, I don't know, like it, it yeah, that's what I'm going to say. I do like this play. Uh, I think there was a film by like Boz Lerman. It, he took like some obscure, um, some like obscure work in the nineties and he made it into a movie and he just put it in like a modern setting. Um, and that's what I kind of like mean with this with this like shit like kind of it's easy like with the language to lose the the that way in that you're talking about and sometimes just seeing that it costumed and um and in the set kind of brings people into it and being like oh i see what you're talking about i see what they're talking about and this is all about yeah excellent um and, and it's actually one of the few places where I, I, i'm also thinking that period costumes really really appeal as well uh, i'm often one to f immediately throw things into the modern dress but actually this one really really appealing to me in uh, uh, uh mid, mid mid 16th century liza yeah uh, as 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 you were both saying that i was thinking maybe the only conceivable way this could work is is if you make it into a musical like one of those big sweeping angsty eighties glurge musicals, uh, where uh, where like everyone everyone sings songs uh, about about uh, how angsty they are and and sensual suggestion has and hypocrisy have the sort of King Herod in Jesus Christ superstar number that's a runaway hit and the whole rest of the thing is like ah why am I such a sinful person and anyway maybe that's the only way it could work. I, I love the way you say that maybe the only way when we've we, we, we've I, I think we've gone through about five or six ways <laughs> we have and and I would be delighted to see any of those ways work but like philologus I lack faith 
Uh, and uh, Eric? I was just going to say that you could also, like, I feel like even if, like, the text is difficult to deal with in terms of the religious stuff, you can, there are elements that you can workshop uh, as we, what, as we did, like, with other plays where you take out a scene and then you just work on it and work on it and see what happens. Yeah, and, and also just straightforward text work. I think there's, there's a lot more um, give and play with uh, some of that dialogue than you get in a first read. Uh, I mean, especially some of the really complicated stuff in a dialect yesterday, but actually just really um, getting into the way the, uh, the verse flows and actually how dynamic it can be at times. Um, uh, with you know, which is is not always easy when it's a, a verse form that uh, most people haven't necessarily trained with or or done that much work with. So actually, being able to really dive into that and really make it sing uh, is another possibility. We have um, attacked this play considerably more than uh, I certainly at the beginning of the week was expecting, um, and uh, maybe we'll do more on it. If you do want us to do more on it, um, then uh, do do uh, throw us a bell, uh, become a patron, join us, follow us on twitter put a comment in the, the the thing below like and subscribe that's what you're supposed to do. like us and subscribe and stuff um do all of those things uh, if you wish if not thank you very much and goodbye cat waving time goodbye <laughs> oh. <laughs>